<laughs> Alright guys, hello, welcome back to History and Stitch. Um, today I am attempting to show y'all the decades of clothing I own here and have made, um, or at least half have made, because today I'm going to melt in this. Uh, <laughs> this is not what I'm wearing all day. This is the first one I'm starting with, so we are starting in, I think, 19 teens? This feels like a cycling jacket. It has super poofy sleeves when it's actually been washed in the high collar. And, like, it actually sinks in and then flares out again. And I love this sweater. And I got it for Christmas a few years ago. And my grandmother thought I was nuts because she's the one who got it for me. And I'm sitting there freaking out going, it looks like a cycling sweater. And everybody in my family looked at me and went, it looks like a what? <laughs> 19 teens. You had specific clothes for bicycling. It looks like one of those. And it makes me happy. So here we are. Um, but I also have my flannel relatively longer skirt on. But it has. I, I made sure to have the pleat thing in the front. Even though it's not big enough to actually be a pleat all the way down. And I have my boots on. And my Victorian boots on. So this is the first step. Um, from here. I have a 1940s that I got in Reading, Pennsylvania this past summer. Um, it is a 40s dress. It is an original. I love it. I had bought it thinking it would fit, hoping it would fit. Carried it around the whole event, got home, threw it on real quick because we had to go to a uh, family night for a family friend who had passed away and got excessively excited because it fit like a glove. I love it. <laughs> I might end up wearing that the rest of the day, if anything else. Um, so I've got that. I have my corduroy pants and a shirt. The pants pattern is from the 30s, so I guess it could be kind of that time period, but that style pants also lasted one time. The only difference is the crotch is probably way too low for like the 50s, but what I got. Uh, and then I have a skirt that I made from a 1960s pattern for, not for, from my grandmother. Uh, and then I have the shoes for those as well because I have my Mary Janes and then my, my, my other shoes. So this is what we're doing today. Um, there will be another chunk of this because I have 1860s and 1700s stuff at this point too. They're just all at work instead of here. So I have to go and get those. So that'll be a part two to all of this. Um, I also have a 1830s dress. It does not fit me, but I will show you guys in that part two video. I got it from my grandma Tammy. Um, I think it's 19, or 19, 1830s. It is definitely a hand-printed fabric. Like, the design on it is hand-blocked. Block-printed, there's the words. Uh, but the style of it makes me think 1930, or 19, I am stuck in the 1900s, the 1830s. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what we're doing today. And we'll see where this goes, because... This might be interesting. Um, yeah, let's get started. Because now we've already done one. Let's see where the rest of them go. Other part of this, my hair is a hot mess. I am sorry. <laughs> I thought I would try and curl it last night with foam curls, which I had sworn off. I realized I swore them off. The ones in the front mostly worked. Like, this half did beautifully, but it was mostly dry when I put it up. This half was still pretty damp when I put it up, which a wet set should be. It did not appreciate it. It wasn't dry yet at 10 o'clock this morning. So here I am. Half my head is curled and looks decent, and the other half looks like a tornado hit it, and it's still flat as a pancake. So this is where we're at, and this, we'll, we'll see the rest of this. 
this would be that 40 one. So. but 60s ish. I really, yeah. I know for a fact the skirt is. It's a pattern that my grandmother used. But I have my shoes on. I have my stockings on. This is a wool skirt, so this is about to be worn a whole lot more often. But 60s. Ta da! <laughs> Same shoes. But here we are. 50s? Maybe? All right, so yeah, this is definitely what I'm wearing the rest of the day. But, um, basically, this is it. This is the first chunk. Part two is going to be, um, 1860s, 1850s. I will show you all the 1830s dress I have, um, and then late 1700s. I don't have the stays finished yet, because... I eyelets, eyelets. That's <laughs> that's it. Um, but eyelets are not happening. Uh, I also have so many. I I have a project at work that I am trying to finish that has so many buttonholes. Um, trying to get it done in the next weekish so that I can start working on the eyelets again. But yeah, that's where we're at right now and that's where I'm going to be for a long long time here until I get a wild hair to make something completely different uh like proper 19 teen stuff which probably would happen anyway if I can find some decent wool probably going to happen but I also have so many other projects I have to get them first could also thought process here I might do a uh, fancy dress kind of version of this because I have a 40s inspired dress like party dress almost uh, honestly have no clue if it even fits anymore because I made that oh dear lord seven years ago eight years ago it might fit I don't know we'll see what happens um I have my 60s ball gown, like 1860s. That might be it. So there's going there there could be a two chunk part of that of just looking at them and maybe talking about them a little bit. But yeah, that's where we're at. So uh, like, follow, subscribe. Any more suggestions? Put them down below, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.